Hello everyone. Welcome to my English class. This is Ruth Kamalini. Deal in English from Telangana Tribal Welfare Residential Degree College for Women, Madhuk, Telangana. Today I'm going to teach you what literary devices are and their importance. This video is really going to be very useful if you are taking language exams. or if you are seeking to analyze a piece of text or enhance your writing and speaking skills so let's get started what is a literary device literary devices are various techniques used in writing to help us express ourselves and our ideas in a more colorful way than just using standard words on a page literary devices help the writer or speaker to play around with words or have some fun with the text in simple words we can say that these literary devices help us to express our ideas in a much better or clearer way elevate our writing or speaking skills from meager to much magnificent for better understanding of the text adding color to our words they of course adorn the language and awaken our imagination they make our words more persuasive vivid and relatable to the reader or the listener let's consider two still sentences he ran fast versus he ran like the wind In the first sentence, the word "fast" does not help me guess his speed as to how fast it is. The second expression, "ran like the wind," does definitely help me. So, figures of speech do provide emphasis, freshness, and clarity to our expression. So, let's learn some of the most commonly used figures of speech. First among them is simile. What is a simile? A simile is a literary device which is used to compare two different things that are not alike. It says that one thing is like or is as another thing. The two things are of a different kind and yet are alike in some significant way. For example. If I say the kid's school bag was as heavy as a bag full of rocks, I clearly know that the comparison is on weight. We can use two patterns when using of a simile. The first pattern is verb plus like a plus noun. I'll give you an example. The moon shone bright. like a diamond in the night sky so the verb used here is shown like a the noun is a diamond so the moon shone bright like a diamond in the night sky the second pattern is as adjective as plus noun example the girl's eyes were as black as coal So here we are comparing the eyes of girls, the color of girls' eyes to the color of coal. So her eyes were as black as coal. So we can make out that we use words like or as to compare two different things. Look at this picture. Observe the girl here. Notice her features. So we observe that the girl has blue eyes, blonde hair, and uh, has a bright smile. Look at this picture too. We see the sun here. So if you observe the sun, it is round. It's yellow. So if you 
compare the two pictures the adjective that matches in these two pictures is bright so we can say her smile is as bright as the sun or her smile is bright like the sun let's look at some more examples that memory blinked like a distant fog light in stormy sea this piece of text is taken from the color of water by james mcbride here the memory is compared with the distant fog light so let's look at some more example to get a better idea of what a simile is he crept into the room as quiet as a mouse so he crept into the room as quiet as a mouse so here the adjective quiet is similar in both things so he kept quietly like he crept quietly like a mouse so we can say he crept into the room as quiet as a mouse or you can say he can he crept into the room like a mouse next example is as stubborn as a mule so here we are comparing the quality the stubbornness in both the person and the mule so we can say he is as stubborn as a mule next example the water sparkled like stars in the sky so the water is sparkling like if you look at the water it looks like stars in the sky so here you are comparing the sparkling of water with the that of the sparkling of stars so you see the water sparkle like stars in the sky next one she is as busy as we so here you make a comparison the adjective that you have used here to compare the two things as busy so she is as busy as a bee she is busy like a bee Our second figure of speech is a metaphor. So what's a metaphor? Metaphor is a figure of speech that describes a person or object by referring to something that is considered to have similar characteristics to that person or object. Like simile, metaphor is also used to make a comparison between two things that aren't alike but do have something in common. A metaphor states that one thing is another thing. It equates those two things not because uh, they actually are the same, but for the sake of comparison. But unlike a simile, where two things are compared directly using like or as, a metaphor's comparison is more indirect, usually made by stating something is something else. In other words, it is comparing two different things without using like or as. Simple difference between simile and metaphor is when you use a simile, you say that something is like or as something, and when you use a metaphor, you say that something is something else. For example, look at these two sentences. When you use a simile, you say he fights like a lion in the battlefield, and the same can be said as a metaphor. He is a lion in the battlefield. Let's see an example. All the world's a stage, men and women merely players by Shakespeare. A very famous quote from the play is, "As you like it." Here Shakespeare is comparing the world to a stage and men and women to players or actors. One more example. We often say that life is one big roller coaster ride. In this sentence, life is being compared to a roller coaster ride. And when we think of a roller coaster ride, we think of the twists and turns, the crests and the traps. the accelerations and the smooth sailing moments and we relate the same experience to life in terms of 
various ups and downs, exciting and the boring moments. In short, life is a blend of joys and sorrows, like two sides of a coin. So, as a figure of speech, metaphors are extremely valuable in making an abstract idea such as life clearer by associating the idea with something concrete such as roller coaster that relates to one or more of the senses. Let's see one more. Climb up the success ladder. Again, success is an abstract thing. So by comparing it to a ladder, we can imply gradual progression, difficulties involved in reaching to the top. Since uh, similes and metaphors both involve comparison of unlike things, one useful tip that will help you tell one from the other is, a simile uses the words like or as when you are comparing multiple things and a metaphor doesn't, it says one thing is another thing. So some more examples for better clarity. He's Zim, he's a cunning old fox. Here we meant to say that he is a clever crafty person, he is cunning like a fox. Second one, the classroom was a zoo. The children were so noisy that they were behaving wild and crazy like animals in the zoo. Third one, the snow is a white blanket, the snow covered the earth like a blanket so we say the snow is a white blanket next one the children were flowers grown in concrete gardens concrete gardens make it really hard for flowers to grow this metaphor can mean that the children grew up in really hard situations but have grown up and bloomed Let's see metaphors on love love. Mother Teresa described love as Love is a fruit in season at all times and within the reach of every hand. She meant to say every, everyone can reach this love through meditation, prayer, sacrifice and, and an intense inner life. Anyone may gather it and no limit is set. Another metaphor on love. Love is a dog from hell, said by Charles Bukowski. For those uh, who have bitter experiences, love is a dog from hell. So love is heavenly to some, but for some it's like a dog from hell. Yeah, that's how he perceived love. So that's about metaphors. Hope you have understood it. Our next figure of speech is oxymoron. So what's an oxymoron? What does it mean and how to use it in a sentence? An oxymoron is a figure of speech that juxtaposes elements that appear to be contradictory. It combines words that have opposite or very different meanings. It's a figure of speech that has contradictory or opposite words appearing side by side. Basically it's a combination of two words that really have opposite meanings. The origin of the word oxymoron is from Greek and oxy means sharp and moron means dull. The word itself is made of two opposite words. So the combination of opposite words is oxymoron. Let's see an example. Open secret. By definition, a secret is only known to a select few. So how can it be open? If you're wondering why anyone can use such a meaningless expression, things get more interesting. An open secret actually refers to a supposed secret that is in fact 
known to many. Consider organized chaos. So how can chaos by definition a state of disorder be organized? The term is used to describe a situation that seems chaotic or confusing but in the end leads to a successful result. For example, the kitchen was an organized chaos. The chefs worked hurriedly, the manager shouted, and the servers picked up orders, but the food always turned out delicious. What this example meant is that the kitchen worked efficiently, even when it gave the appearance of disorder. That's organized chaos. So sometimes oxymorons are used for humorous effect also. Example, happily married, which is considered to be mother oxymorons. It's a funny phrase which meant to say that married people can never be happy. So here you have uh, two pictures which demonstrate which demonstrates the fact. Next, oxymorons can even be used to describe everyday objects like electric candles, invisible ink, etc. These are oxymorons because candles ideally belong to pre-electric era. And the purpose of ink is to show and not to hide. Let's look at some more examples. Alone together. The word alone means to be by yourself. So how can you be alone when there is another person or a group of people with you? Actually the word means that a couple or a group is by themselves together with each other but no one else is present there another oxymoron a crash landing so an aid plan can land or it can crash but it is used to describe an act of bringing an aircraft to the ground roughly in an emergency we say we can say he managed to make a crash landing in a field Let's look at some more examples. Here we have a few oxymorons. There are innumerable oxymorons, but I have just picked up a few for you. The first one is exact estimate. Focus on the two words which have opposite meanings. Devout at the atheist. Found missing. Old news. Loud whisper. Let's see some oxymorons in, in the sentences too. The first one. The clown was seriously funny. So oxymoron that is used in this sentence is seriously funny. Both the words mean opposite but are placed together. Next one. You are clearly confused by the explanation. Oxymoron that is used here is clearly confused. Again here, the two words mean opposite. So the words are placed side by side so they are oxymorons. Next one, did you bring the original copy? So the oxymoron that is used here is original copy. Fourth one, which is deeply superficial. So the words deeply superficial are opposite in meaning. They are oxymorons. And the last one is that dog is pretty ugly. So here pretty ugly is the oxymoron. So sure you have understood what oxymorons are. They are fun to learn and are a great boost for your vocabulary too. So give it a try. So that's about oxymorons.
then we come to hyperbole one of my favorite literary devices so what's hyperbole hyperbole is an exaggerated statement or claim not meant to be taken literally it's a figure of speech in which exaggeration is used for emphasis or effect it's like making a mountain out of molehill hyperbole is a greek word which means excess for example if you haven't met your friend for a while maybe after some days weeks or months you use this hyperbole you say i haven't met you for ages now the word ages stands for a very long time maybe centuries so it's a hyperbolic statement let's consider another example when you're a little stressed or overworked you say i'm dealing with a million issues these days we know that million is a very huge number i'm sure you're not dealing with so many issues so it's a hyperbole there's a song i recall You've got a smile that that could light up this whole town which is of course hyperbolic but smile is a curve that sets everything straight and every time you smile at someone it is an action of love a gift to that person a beautiful thing so smile so hyperbole is without a doubt the single greatest thing in the history of the universe let's see some hyperboles used in english literature mostly they are used in poetry to evoke strong feelings and create strong impression example i had to wait in the station for 10 days an eternity This line is taken from The Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Here Conrad emphasizes the passing of time, which is of course hyperbole. Then there is not a long period. Let's see how hyperbole emphasizes feelings and emotions from W. H. Auden's poem. As I walked out one evening, I want to read out the lines for you. I love you, dear. I love you till China and Africa meet, and the river jumps they over the mountain, and the salmon sing in the street. I love you till the ocean is folded and hung up to dry, and the seven stars go squawking like geese about the sky. The poet uh, eaves eavesdrops on the lovers and listens to their promises of eternal devotion. Here, the lover promises his love, that his love will survive as long as it would, it would take for China and Africa to slide together in continental drift, or for a river to find course over a mountain, etc. He just meant to say that his love for her is for eternity, which is of course hyperbolic. Let's see some more examples. First one: My house is a million miles from here. It may be far, but definitely not a million miles away. So it's a hyperbolic statement. Second one. I'm so hungry I could eat a horse. Definitely this is hyperbolic. Third one. We had to wait forever for the bus. You don't have to wait forever. It may be for a little while more but you're so exhausted waiting that you use hyperbolic statements like this. Next one. I have a million things to do. Surely it's it may not be million things it cannot be million things so when you are exhausted 
overstressed, you use hyperbolic statements like this. I've told you a hundred times not to bite your nails. May not told hundred times, but maybe sometimes, but you exaggerate and uh, say it's hundred times. Next one. I'm so tired, I could sleep for a year. Definitely no one can sleep for a year. But it's a hyperbolic statement wherein you express your tiredness and say that you want to sleep for a long time. Next one. My teacher gave us a ton of homework. Sure everybody had this experience in the school when you are overloaded with your homework. But it's definitely a ton of homework. It could be a lot but not a ton. So this is a hyperbolic statement. Next one. He is as skinny as as a toothpick. The person is very lean, thin, but sure uh, he's not so lean as a toothpick. So this is also a hyperbolic statement. The ninth one. This book weighs a ton. The book is definitely very heavy for the boy to carry. But it definitely doesn't weigh a ton. So this is a hyperbolic statement. That food was so hot, my ears were smoking. So the food was so hot, you express your feelings that you say that you're so hot that you feel your ears are smoking. So we can say that hyperbole is without a doubt. The single greatest thing in the history of the universe. So I think you got a pretty good idea what hyperboles are. So that's about hyperboles. Hope you have enjoyed it. Do try them. Our next literary device is Portmanteau Word. Let's learn about portmanteau words which are extremely popular in modern day English and we see new word combinations popping up every day. So what's a portmanteau word and how is it formed? A portmanteau is a literary device in which two or more words are joined together to coin a new word which refers to a single concept. The new word formed shares the same meanings as the original words. It blends two or more words to form a new word and we need to remember that portmanteau word fuses both the sounds of the original words and the meaning of the components. Thanks to the author Lewis Carroll who coined the word portmanteau in the 16th century in his famous novel through the looking glass. In the sixth chapter of the novel, we read Humpty Dumpty explaining the meaning of two portmanteau words, Slithy and Mimsy. Slithy is a combination of slimy plus light, and Mimsy is a combination of miserable and flimsy. Interestingly, the word portmanteau too is a combination of two words porter which means to carry and mantle or cloak so portmanteau is something in which you carry your clothes let's understand it with the help of an example the word brunch is formed by splicing two words breakfast and lunch we are from breakfast and Brunch from lunch are blended to form a portmanteau word brunch, which is the meal taken between breakfast and lunch. We should remember that it is very different from a compound word, which is also formed by combining two words. A compound word has a different or new meaning, it doesn't correspond to the meaning of the words it is formed from. For example, handout, which is a compound word and it means a piece of printed information. 
it doesn't correspond to the meaning of the words hand and out French from which it is formed. Let's look at some portmanteau words. The first one is netizen, which is formed from the words internet and citizen, and it means an individual who is mostly invo involved with online activities. Second one, shopaholic, formed from the words shop plus alcoholic and it is used to an individual who is addicted to shopping and buying products. Third one, motel, formed from the words motor plus hotel and it's an overnight accommodation arranged for motorists. Fourth one, tele-evangelist, formed from the words television and evangelist. Is an evangelist who regularly appears on television. Electroculation formed from the words electricity and execution. It means death by electricity. Webinar formed from the words web plus seminar and it's a seminar conducted over the internet. Oxbridge formed from the words Oxford and Cambridge. It's a term used to describe the Oxford and Cambridge universities. Next one, edutainment, formed from the words education and entertainment. And it is used to refer to games or other forms of entertainment that have educational aspect. Next word, disappointment, formed from the words anticipation and disappointment. It means the feeling of let down one experiences when hype gives way to reality. Tenth one, blog, formed from the words web plus log, and it's a web page regularly updated by an individual or a group. Let's see some more examples. Advertorial, formed from the words advertisement plus editorial. Biopic formed from biography plus picture. Emote icon formed from the words emotion and icon. Internet formed from the words international and network. Malware formed from the words malicious and software. Multiplex from, formed from the words multiple and complex. Pixel formed from the words picture and element. Rom-com formed from the words romance and comedy. Smog formed from the words smoke and fog. I think you have understood what what matter words are and how they are formed and used. So that's about what matter words. Our next literary device is loan words. So what are loan words? Where are they borrowed from? A loan word is a word adopted from one language and incorporated into another language. It is used as it is and is pronounced in the same way too. So we can say a loan word is a word that is adopted from foreign languages like Greek, French, Latin, Spanish, Indian, etc. It can also be called a borrowed word. The abstract noun borrowing refers to the process of speakers adopting words from a source language into their native language. Languages can be considered as a one big joint family that has a history. These languages are connected to one another and as languages develop and grew, they added new words. Sometimes they take words or borrow them from other languages and then use them as their own. 
and these words which they take from other languages are called loan words and english is the major language with the most loan words amazing to learn that loan words make up 80% of english so undoubtedly english has been stealing words from other languages over centuries on a on a light note i doubt they'll be given back any time though they are taken on loan so we see here words taken from different languages like from arabic we have words like algebra and alcohol from chinese feng shui yin yang french sabotage fiance resume village restaurant etc and we see many other words taken from other languages like german greek italian japanese portuguese russian spanish etc here i have picked up some loan words and let's learn in depth about their origin and meaning so here are some foreign words we we use every day many foreign phrases have taken their place in english speaking and writing here are some of the most common words first one bon voyage taken from french meaning have a nice trip example we all shouted bon voyage as david left for his vacation second one days are taken from french meaning a feeling that one has lived through the present situation before it means already seen example i entered the room and immediately felt a sense of deja vu third one entrepreneur taken from french refers to a person who starts a business and is creative and innovative with lots of ideas popping up example he is a real entrepreneur in the very best spirit fourth one genre a style or category of art music or literature it is taken from french and means a kind or style we use it to classify different things such as music art or literature example what genre does the book fall into comedy or tragedy next one on mars it's a french word meaning in a large group example the fans left the stadium on mars once they were sure that their team would lose the match 61 four pa meaning a social blunder or wrong step or move example nikki realized too late that attending the protest was a four pa 71 Now let's see words taken from Latin. Seventh, ipso facto, meaning by the fact itself. Example: A teacher, ipso facto, is in charge of his or her class. Next one: Modus operandi, meaning method of operating. Example: The chef's modus operandi for preparing a meal always began with laying out all of the ingredients and tools needed on the counter. Next one. Status quo meaning the existing condition. Example, the new status quo has received considerable support. Next one. Prima donna meaning temperamental or conceited person example laura wasn't popular with the other girls because they consider her to be a prima donna next one kindergarten taken from german 
which literally, literally means children's garden. It is the first two years of school for children before they go to elementary school. Example, he is in kindergarten. Next one, doppelganger, taken from German and means someone who looks exactly like someone else. Now these are just a few. Let's also see words taken that have Indian origin. There are many words but here I have just listed a few. First one, avatar, borrowed from Sanskrit and it means manifestation or personification. Next one, bangle, borrowed from Kannada, means it's band worn round the wrist. Third one, cheetah, borrowed from Sanskrit and it means it is the fastest animal. Fourth one, chutney, borrowed from Hindi and it's a pickled preparation. Fifth one, got, borrowed from Hindi and it's a light bedstead. Sixth one, curry, borrowed from Tamil, it's a sauce or relish for rice. Seventh one, dharma, borrowed from Sanskrit and it means law. Eighth one, raita, borrowed from Bengali and it's a yogurt mixed with spices, diced or grated vegetables. Next one, roti borrowed from Sanskrit and means bread. Next one, shawl borrowed from Urdu and it's fabric used for covering head or shoulders. Next one, yoga. It's borrowed from Sanskrit and it means to unite or to yoke. Next one, shampoo. It's borrowed from Hindi and it means massage. Next word, Pajamas, it's borrowed from Urdu and it is a leg garment. Next one, Nirvana, it means it's borrowed from Sanskrit and it means disappear. The last one which I have taken is jungle, it's a Hindi word and it means rough. So there are, so there are many other words but here are just a few and these are all loan words which have entered into English from many other languages. Hope you got a pretty good idea of what loan words are. Our next literary device is palindrome. What's a palindrome? A palindrome is a word, phrase, number or other sequence of symbols that reads the same backward as forward. Its origin is from Greek and means running back again. Let's look at some examples. Bib, Madam, Peep, Tot, Riffle, Level, Radar, Civic, Noon, Wow. If you notice these words, they all read backward as forward. So they are called palindromes. Let's look at some palindromic phrases now. No lemon, no melon. Next one. Never odd or even. Do you know what is the longest palindromic word in English? It is Sai Puwaki Viko Piyas with 19 letters. It's the longest according to the Guinness World Records and it means a traveling salesman who sells caustic soda to the soap industry. It's a Finnish word. Now let's look at, look at some palindromic sentences. First one, do geese see God? Read the same from back, you get the same sentence. Second one, a man, a plan, a canal. It describes Panama. It refers to the building of the Panama Canal, built over 100 years ago, and 
Samantha. It is built because of one man. It could be Ferdinand or Roosevelt. Third sentence. Straw? No. Too stupid a fad. I put suit on once. Fourth one. Was it a car or a cat I saw? So read the read the sentences from back to get the same sentence. So all these uh, sentences which I have read are palindromic sentences. Now let's look at another long example, another long sentence. Are we not pure? No, sir. Panama's moody Noriga brags. It is garbage. Irony dooms a man, a prisoner up to new era. So read the sentence from back, you get the same sentence. It's the longest palindromic sentence. Now, <clears throat> I want you to guess the palindrome based on the given clues from the sentences I'm going to read for you. First one, when both hands of a clock are on 12 and the sun is overhead, what is it? palindromic number greater than 9. I think you got the answer. Next one. The next palindromic number after the one above. What is the next palindromic number after 9? Next one. The smallest palindromic number greater than 99. So what is the smallest palindromic number greater than 99? And the last one. The greatest palindromic number less than 99. So what is the number? Palindromic number less than 99. I'll give you a few seconds. I think you got the answers already. Okay, the first one. When both hands of the clock are on 12 and the sun is overhead, it's noon. Other term used for father. Fourth one, a female member of the family. It's mom, M O M. Fifth one, the smallest palindromic number greater than nine. So it's eleven, one one. Sixth one, the next palindromic number after the one above. So the answer is twenty-two. The smallest palindromic number greater than 99. It's 111. And the last one, the greatest palindromic number less than 99. The answer is 88. So this is about palindrome, palindromes. Uh, hope you understood it and uh, you got an idea of what palindromes are. recap of what we have learned till now. Simile, it's comparing two or multiple words using like or as. It is saying something is like something. Metaphor, it's also comparing two or multiple words but unlike simile we don't use like or as. We say something is something else. Oxymoron, it is placing two opposite words side by side or it combines words that have opposite or very different meanings. Hyperbole. Hyperbole is exaggeration used for the sake of emphasis or effect. What panto? A new word formed by joining two words and combining their meanings. Loan words. Words taken from a foreign language with little or no change. Palindromes. 
Palindromes are words, phrases or sentences which reads the same backward as forward. So that's about a few literary devices which are very commonly used. Hope you have a clarity now what each one meant. Hope this video has been useful to you. Thanks for watching. This is Ruth Kamalini, lecturer in English from TTWRDC Women.